On the 8th of July 2010, a 17,000 strong petition to exempt small scale live music events from licensing was presented to the Prime Minister. The petitioner, Phil Little from the Live Music Forum, was accompanied by DCMS Select Committee Chairman John Whittingdale, sponsor of the Live Music Bill Lord Clement Jones, Conservative Live Music spokesman Lord Colwyn, together with members of the Live Music Forum. The petition supports licensing exemptions recommended by the Culture Select Committee in 2009, which Lord Clement Jones's Live Music Bill proposes to implement. The bill received its first reading in the House of Lords the previous day. The Live Music Forum issued the following statement. The last government utterly failed to deliver on its promise of an explosion in live music. Instead, the Licensing Act created a bureaucratic minefield for live music events and saw the licensing regime extended to schools, hospitals and even private premises, while abolishing the exemption allowing two musicians to perform without a license. Overzealous enforcement by local authorities has led to cancellations of many harmless events, with no regard for cultural, educational or economic considerations. Birmingham Council banned a clown at Zippo Circus from playing a comedy trumpet. Carradon District Council licensed the performance of non-religious carols, ruling that Silent Night was permitted, but Jingle Bells was a potential criminal offence. South Lakeland Council have issued a premises licence that restricts choir practice in a primary school to one hour a week. Bath and North East Somerset Council have licensed a hospital in order to provide a piano to entertain patients. Daventry Council threatened a headmaster with six months in prison or a £20,000 fine for failing to obtain permission to stage a school musical. Inevitably, it is the licensing of grassroots music in pubs and restaurants that attracted the detailed attentions of local government officials. The Licensed Multiple Retailers Association reported a 19% drop in the proportion of expenditure on live music in pubs since the Act came into force. This did not stop the previous licensing minister, Jerry Sutcliffe, from claiming that the Licensing Act had made it easier for premises to stage live music. DCMS even produced a widely criticised report entitled Changes in Live Music, which claimed that the live music sector was thriving and that there was no evidence of negative impact of live music licensing. The last government devolved responsibility for licensing enforcement to local authorities. This was not good news for live music. The local government association has clamped down hard on anything emanating from a musical instrument while issuing misleading live music statistics of its own. Last year, the LGA falsely claimed that 80% of all licensed premises were authorised to stage live music. In fact, only 27% of licensed premises now have permission to stage live music. Prior to 2005, all licensed premises were entitled to put on live music under the two-in-a-bar rule. The LGA produced a survey claiming that 90% of council leaders warned of a massive increase in noise complaints if the government went ahead with licensing exemptions for live music. It transpired that no proper survey was conducted and that no council leader was actually contacted. In fact, this was a blind survey of a self-selecting sample of licensing officers. Replies were anonymous and LACORS cannot tell whether multiple replies were received on behalf of one council. In January 2010, the LGA produced a document opposing the Live Music Bill, claiming that the success of the minor variations process, a tortuous procedure supposed to encourage live music licensing, shows that the present system is working well and does not need to be amended. In fact, at the time of writing, the LGA knew of only three new live music permissions that had been granted through this process. Through its legal arm, LACORS, the LGA has remained trenchantly opposed to licensing reform, recently proposing more bizarre and hysterical licensing restrictions, such as a recommendation for the provision of bagpipes to be licensed. Live music can never thrive where its mere provision is a potential criminal offence unless licensed. But where all broadcast entertainment and most recorded music is automatically allowed. And live music can never thrive under the strict control of licensing authorities that have been encouraged by the LGA to invite and then uphold complaints about live music events before they have even taken place. We urge the coalition to exempt grassroots live music from this draconian licensing regime, to introduce proper rules of evidence to licensing hearings and to stop local government from destroying our cultural heritage. <laughs>